Now I'm going to kind of get to where I am now. Um, I, the company also had another company called uh, Prophecy Radio Group with stations in Texas. And he had a station out there um, that was an adult hit station called Doc FM, 107, the doctor of music variety. And he had been wanting me to come to Texas for a number of years because the station, when it first launched back in 2008, was doing well. But it, 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 it had a good book the first year. The revenue was good the first year. It was just dying. And he goes, Rob, I'd really like you to come to Texas and, and, and see what you think and, 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 and be able to get the success in Texas that you're having in California. <laughs> and I just kept telling him, I go, Bill, I don't want to go. <laughs> well, I'm what, not a Texas What guy. part of Texas? Sherman, Texas. Texas is a bit of a geographic oddity. It's like a desert. It's an hour away from everything. Giant desert. It, it, it's more red dirt. It's flat red dirt. That's Texas. That's, okay. We were an hour north of Dallas. Okay, okay. So we were, we were kind of about 17 miles from the Oklahoma border. Oh, okay, okay. So they call it Texoma. <laughs> so he was having some problems with a general manager there. Um Revenue was bad. There was also some complaints with some of the female attor- of female uh, employees about his conduct, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And he was asking me my advice on what it, what he should do, and I was giving him my advice. And then he finally said, "Well, Rob, you know the staff's really rough. So when you go down there and meet with him, you got to really be be gentle." I said, "Well, what do you mean when I go down there?" And he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have you come down to Texas. I go, Bill, we've talked about this. I don't want to go to Texas. He goes, Rob, I'm not asking you anymore. I'm telling you, you're going to Texas. And I said, well, I don't have a contract with Prophecy Radio Group. Mine's with Mad River Radio. And he goes, oh, we're negotiating a new contract, are we? I said, well, yeah. So I thus became an employee of both Prophecy oh, funny. Radio Group and Mad River Radio. Wow. And which for the next six years of my life found me spending three weeks in Texas and a week in Eureka, flying back and forth from Sacramento to DFW. So you stayed, you lived in Sacramento, but you flew back and forth to those other markets. <laughs> it gets even stranger than that. Alex. Actually, <laughs> I was living in a hotel suite. Okay. Wow. A- actually, Denison. So I would be in a, in a hotel suite for three weeks. Then on Saturday, I would drive to DFW and take, fly out to Sacramento. Sunday, I would drive to Eureka, the seven-and-a-half-hour drive to Eureka, and, and manage those stations there for that week. Saturday, I would drive back to Sacramento. Sunday, I'd fly back to DFW. I did that for four years. Wow. After the fourth year, I was kind of I was getting a little burned out. I mean, I wasn't really getting any days off. I mean, wow! If, like you know, every day you were working. Huh? Oh yeah, you know, even if you're traveling, I mean, you're still in sense working. Yeah. And he finally uh, let it be, so I could fly out on a Friday and drive on Monday. So I mean, I was still only getting to spend, you know, one weekend a month with with my family. And after about two more years of that, Alex, I kind of just burned out. I couldn't I couldn't do it anymore. I was 50, that traveling back and forth. And, and let me tell you, living in hotel suites and you know, having your bed made and having <laughs> free breakfast, breakfast every morning, it's cool for a while, and then it's not. Yeah. And so I, I mean, it was, it was to the point where it was even affecting my health. And um, I told him that I needed a break. I just couldn't couldn't do this anymore. And so I tendered my resignation. He wouldn't accept it. So, but what he did do, though, is he kept me on as a consultant. So I would not have to travel as much. I could stay here in my, you know, up here in Northern California. And, and, and that's where I am today. I'm also the uh, director of digital media for a group of great uh, newspapers up here, McNaughton Media. That's, that takes up most of my time, but I'm also the consultant. So I still... I'm doing the radio thing. So what is what is the uh, what is the digital consulting thing you're doing? McNaughton um, McNaughton uh, Media McNaughton Newspapers is um, up here in Placerville where I live. It's they have the Mountain Democrat. Mm-hmm. It's the oldest 
uh, newspaper in the West. Wow. Um, it's also, we have, we have newspapers in El Dorado Hills, Cameron Park. We have one in Davis, the Davis um, Enterprise. Yeah, I know We have that one, one in Fairfield. So, you know, and radio, how things have changed and all that. I don't need to tell you or even your audience <laughs> how the newspaper industry has really changed. Oh, yeah, radically. And, and they have embraced the digital side of their newspapers and their media. They have And to. also being able to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and being able to help their advertisers not not necessarily um, uh, just run ads in the newspapers, but do things digitally with banner display. And one of the things that we sell, too, we have a very robust amount of product, but we sell, we do sell Spotify and Pandora, mm -hmm. as well as Connected TV. And, I mean, I've just done a couple campaigns recently where my clients have been on Spotify and Pandora. Does that mean they... So I'm still uh, doing did... the... Do you, I'm sorry. Do you do you do you mean like bands that want to be on Spotify, or what kind of people are you talking about? No, Spotify? no, our our our, our clients, our, our our newspaper oh, clients, right. oh, advertisers, advertisers. Okay, I just started yeah, thinking bands. Yeah. When, as soon as you said Spotify, I started thinking of bands. <laughs> well, bands. I mean, yeah, and Spotify. You know, my my daughter listens to Spotify quite a bit. Um, That's hilarious. I listen to Spotify. I mean, I I, I, li I like the medium, and and I think it for radio people too. And again, I don't want to sound like because radio is still my love and what I like. And but I mean, Spotify is something that needs to be recognized because they did uh, iHeartMedia, as a matter of fact, did a survey recently, and they have discovered that fourteen percent of music listeners are listening to Spotify and Pandora. Yeah. That so. so let me ask you: Are you still working with uh, iHeart, or what, what's your history with iHeart? I have no history with iHeart. Oh, okay, we do okay. sell their products. So oh, we okay. sell we sell their audio. I you know, we you can buy a programmatic radio package that we have, and you'll be on iHeart stations. You could be on Intercom or Bonneville or Cumulus. Um, now, their reps, of course, sell their individual products, but what we can do is we sell them all. So, I mean, if you wanted to be on, we, I just did a campaign recently with, if you, I think you recall, maybe remember, Sarah from Ben. Yes. Advertising. Bob Ben. Um, Hi, handles, Bob. <laughs> yeah, great guy who handles, um, they had uh, Bill Graham Presents back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. But they wanted to do some programmatic, they wanted to do Spotify. And they had, they were doing some digital with iHeart, um, and but I mean the thing is, if they want to be on the iHeart, iHeart can really only sell the iHeart station, just like an intercom, whether it be their terrestrial broadcast or their or their or their um, on their apps and the, the digital right. stuff. Now we did a campaign, and they, I. I could get you on, if you wanted to be on every station in California that's streaming, um, you could go to me. I mean, iHeart probably, could, if you did a buy that wanted to be statewide in California and wanted to be on just what, just, just, the, they got to remember when, when radio stations, when they, you're his, listening to them on the terrestrial, you're hearing one commercial, but if let's say you're listening to them on their app, Mm -hmm. When they go into a stop set, the stop set that you're hearing, the commercials you're hearing on the app are different than the commercials that you're hearing on the terrestrial broadcast. Okay, because the, the ones online are targeted more to the uh, consumer, right? A lot of ones that we will do are kind of reach play. But, I mean, if you're looking for, I mean, we, we just did a, a, an, an ad with a motorcycle, a motorcycle company that does motorcycles. And... He wanted to be on Spotify and as many of the other radio stations around. He was able to choose his format, saying, hey, you know, guys that listen to motor drive motorcycles are probably listening to rock, classic rock, alternative, and country. Mm -hmm. And on Spotify, he could be on those stations. The one just that. So he's not going to be on the Celine Dion station or what right. have you. Right. And we can also, it, it, it's tough, but we can also break it down. So again, he's not going to be on classical. If he does our digital products um, for the streaming stations, he's not going to be on a classical station or an NPR station or something like that. 
So you're bringing up some very uh, interesting topics, and I'd love to get to all of them. But you know what? We're 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 only going to have a, like a half hour left, so I want to talk about quad a little I know, bit. That's why. And I want to talk about something you brought up about commercials, um, because we talked earlier about how, um, you know, before this interview, we talked about how commercials mm -hmm. stop sets, you know, are expanding. Right. Like, I'd like to know your opinion on that. Is that good for the station or is it a tune out? Well, it's, it's obviously a tune out. And I mean, granted, excuse me, you have to have commercials. I mean, you know, Alex. The age-old, the age-old complaint between the sales staff of a radio station and the on-air staff. Mm -hmm. The sales people said, if they, we didn't have sales, you wouldn't have a, a show to, you know, we'd have the money to do your show. If they didn't have a show, you wouldn't have something to sell. Right. So I get that. You know, I understand that. And uh, yeah, a lot of the topics that we're talking about, Alex, especially the, the whole digital side we're talking, it'd be a whole. I mean, that's why I was trying to paint with a broad brush. There's mm -hmm. so many moving parts to it. But it's well documented that these radio stations, when the Telecommunications Act came out, they were, they were. it's just like if you buy a house, and, and by the time, and you live in it for a year, and now the house isn't worth what you paid for it. Yeah. Well, that's what happened with the radio stations. Right. They bought these radio stations at the top of the market, and found out these stations aren't worth what they paid for. Right. So, and you know what's well, funny? That, that was in the dot-com era of the late 90s, early 2000s, when a bunch of dot-com things were inflated high prices. Oh, but, it was, you know, Alex, again, and when I was at Quad, and it, it really helped Quad right. back towards the latter part of dot-coms, because what, what was happening was... They were advertising on Quad. <laughs> When, if you listen to a Bay Area radio station in the late 90s, early 2000s, every commercial was some dot com. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you listen to Live 105 or you listen to K-Fog, um, you, you, it would just be one dot, you, your head was a blur with dot coms by the time the stop set was over. <laughs> to the point where well, none of them are like, memorable because none of them stood out. Exactly. <laughs> so you still have the, the big time radio advertisers of the day, Budweiser. Pepsi, Carl's Jr., McDonald's, Taco Bell, so on and so forth. <clears throat> these these dot coms, as you know, were kind of playing with funny money. Mm -hmm. You know, they had all right. this money. You didn't know where it was coming from, right? But they were paying top dollars. They were getting squeezed out of the San Francisco market. Well, these companies like the Budweisers and the Coca Colas and the McDonald's, they still need to spend their money. If they can't spend it, their money in San Francisco, well, we'll just spend more money in Sacramento. Still market 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we weren't getting that dot-com money like the Bay Area stations were. But now all these traditional advertisers that have always been there, we were, we were getting larger and larger chunks of those advertising dollars. It was, it was a pretty good time for us. Social, Social. Music. Music. 